Good morning. Welcome to Jesus of the Rock Church. My name is Reverend Dan. We're going to continue in the Bible study on the book of Acts. It's absolutely beautiful. We have beautiful uh, Beaver's Dam here. Good old New England. Though it may look nice and sunny and warm, it's actually like 25 or 30 degrees. It is cold. And I'm in short sleeves. Smart. But let's dig right into the Word of God. Dear Lord Jesus, we just praise you and thank you. We love you for the time you have given us to study your word. Help us get the most out of it today. In Jesus' name. Chapter 11, verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with them, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them? But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. See, this is one of God's gifts, seeing a vision. A certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheep, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Verse 6. Upon that which, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered. See? I considered. When you're in a vision, I considered. He's thinking, what is all this going on? What does this mean to me? And saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and the wild beasts, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, No, not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven. So he's pointing out where this voice is actually coming from. From heaven. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already coming to the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. Verse 12, And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house. Have you had an opportunity to see an angel in your house this week? I hope you have, because that means you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. But let's continue. Verse 13, He saw an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? He'll explain to you what you need to get saved. This is very important. It's throughout Scripture. Brothers and sisters of Christ, you need to get saved. You need to know that you know that you know you're saved. Verse 15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. Okay? This is Pentecost. This is what Peter is explaining. Very important to understand what he's saying and not just reading words that are on the page. As I began to speak, so as I was doing what I was told to do, explaining to them how to get saved, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. As on us in the beginning. Pentecost in the upper room, where they were all in one accord, praying, and they all got baptized in the Holy Spirit and started speaking in other tongues. This is what it's talking about. Then I remembered, I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Baptized with the Holy Ghost, word for word, right here in verse 16, and it's actually in red, red print. I don't know if you can see it. Red print, baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
This is not Reverend Dan saying this. This is not Jesus the Rock Church saying this. This is the Word of God. So when I talk to brothers and sisters that don't believe in getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, it says it right there in the Word. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. They said, oh no, that's not for us today. If it's for them then, God doesn't change. You shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Let's go on. Verse 17. For as much <coughs> then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Now I remember last week I got bold. I got filled with the Spirit. Who am I to withstand God? Pastors that are not releasing the baptism of the Holy Spirit in their church because they don't believe what their doctrine, theology, all these t tinkling the ears of their fellow sheep. Who are you to withstand God? But here he's meaning, who am I to withstand God that since the Holy Spirit fell on them as I was talking, should I stop this? of what God is moving, doing. Verse 18, When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now see the correlation? They were just speaking about getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. They all question Peter, like, who are you to do this? This is for Jews, not for Gentiles. What do you think you're going over to those Gentile people for? And after Peter had explained himself and reasoned with them, verse 18, they heard these things, they held their peace, glorified God, praised God for giving the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles, that the, now the correlation, the Gentiles are granted the repentance unto life. Eternal life. Getting baptized in the holy fire is the correlation of repentance unto life, eternal life. That's when I was preaching upon you know that you know. That you know you're saved. Now which they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveling as far as Venice and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to the Antioch, spoke unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. So you're not preaching any other gospel. You're not preaching anything else except Jesus. See, Jesus, the whole time he was here, was preaching and teaching upon the soon coming kingdom of God, and the government shall be on his shoulders. Okay? Verse 21, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. So when you start preaching Jesus, and nothing but Jesus, great numbers start happening. They start building. There's a lot of churches, a lot of bodies of Christ out there, small in numbers, they want to do greater things, but they're spinning the wheels and they can't, because they're stuck. Why is it possible, because you're not letting the Holy Ghost in? Okay? If you want numbers, if you want people to be added, start allowing yourself to do what God has told you to do right out of Scripture. And see your numbers climb and people coming to Christ preaching on the name of Jesus Christ and everything in this, everything, the whole entire book, not just the sections you like, not the only ones you accept, but teaching everything that's in the Word of God. Verse 22, Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Okay, these are all important towns. Who, when he came and he had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. 
Just cling to him. Stick to the Lord. Don't let go. Don't ever let go of Jesus. 24. Verse 24. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. So this man, full of the Holy Ghost. That means this Barnabas was a tongue talker. He spoke in tongues. He was full of the Holy Ghost. Full of faith. Full of good works. Are you full of the Holy Ghost? This is what I'm, the Bible study is all about. I exhort you, ask the Father for it. Get it. It is incredible. It is awesome. Verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Okay? They're hearing what Saul is doing. Remember, Saul was the great persecutor who got saved. Okay? And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Okay, so right here in Scripture, the very first people who were ever called Christians, it started in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Okay, so they're preaching on Jesus. Now the prophets are coming to Antioch. So this spiritual momentum, this wave, this build of Christ, this revival is starting here in Antioch. And the prophets are going to start coming down to prophesy. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Okay, because there's still there's persecution going on here. Which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So you got two brothers in Christ paired up going and doing the works of God. This ends chapter 11. We're going to pick this up. This is all important. Chapter 12. We're going to continue the Bible study in Acts. I hope you were blessed. Until next time, remember, Jesus is Lord. Why? Because He is. Hallelujah. Praise God. And He loves you. God bless. Peace. Bye.